Welcome back, guys, to episode number 58 of the Sweet Science Podcast with your boy Fat Mouse. Who else we got in here? I'm Cash with a K. And let's see. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you too. Why, thank you, sir. Sue. Cash, All I should right. do that next time. Do it. Cash, Cash with a Sue. 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 Uh, yeah, man. Good, uh, good weekend of just a good weekend. Do you get me? Mm. But um, boxing wise was was interesting. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't much to talk about. There's one big fight in the UK which we had, yeah, um, and then a couple of announcements which we'll probably get to after. But the announcements were tantalizing. Do we cover them first? Or should no, we talk about them after? Let's talk about them after. Let's go straight into the boxing. Um, <clears throat> Wembley Arena. Yep. London, England. This side of the river. A uh, good fight between Arta Baterbiev, who was the champion defending his titles, uh, versus Anthony Yard, who was coming for those titles. Second attempt against another Russian. Lions in the camp. Is he Russian, Russian? I think so, isn't it? I think Like, he's one of them so. rushing from... Yeah, anyway, I'm not... But he represents Canada as well. Yes, exactly. He's so. now become Canadian <clears throat> and he represents Canada. Uh, WBC Yeah WBC WBO And IBF yeah. Light heavyweight titles Were all on the line um, And as Mouse said earlier uh, Anthony Yard was making His second attempt At doing the impossible um, And Clearly. He put up A great fight We actually had Better than I expected Really A lot better yeah. A lot better than I expected I'm not going to lie to you I was I'm not going to say I was yawning but before the fight, I was like, we just know how it's going to end. We know what's going to happen. Um, it's going to be a dead fight. You weren't giving Yard a chance. I didn't give him a chance, unfortunately. Uh, and I was also thinking, each round, I was almost in denial. So whilst I'm seeing that he's actually not doing terribly, at the same time, I'm like, come on, man, just hurry up and get knocked out. Do you mm -hmm. get me? Mm -hmm. I was so like... I had these spectacles on yeah. by which I can only see him losing, which is sad because, and you know what didn't help? It was quite busy and noisy where we were. So I couldn't really, man's got ADHD in it. I couldn't really focus on the fight too much. And for that reason, I was just like, just hurry up and get knocked out so that we can just end the noise. Isn't it? <laughs> so it's really bad. But what a fight. Oh. Like now that I'm soaking it in and, I, and I'm, you know, like... What a good fight. It was a very, very good fight. I think Top Rank said, oh, it could be fight of the year 2023. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> you don't not. think so? No, come on, man. That was a good I fight. Talk about the first Top Rank fight. But you've got to look at it in context. You've got someone with literally no, well, practically no amateur experience or yeah. very minimal, yeah. uh, even in the pro ranks as well, yeah. going up against basically a monster, a Loch Ness monster. <laughs> you know the chupacabra is back. Ah, oh, the you know? chupacabra, the is mythical back. creature that you know is unstoppable. He's walking through everybody, kind of this Gennady Golovkin um, air about him. You know, yeah, yeah, just yeah. battering ram. You know, before the fight, eighteen wins, eighteen knockouts, literally just imagine scary. That's a big, just yeah, yeah and you know he he doesn't talk much. Just goes through his opponents. He fights in the ring, does his talking in the ring, and then you've got Yard, who's you know had two losses. One against Kovalev, and then the you know the one against Lyndon Arthur, which he did avenge and avenged in in dramatic style, mm -hmm. dramatic fashion. Mm -hmm. But you know, again, is is he ready for it? Can, is, has he really fought the level to jump straight into? This is exactly why I didn't give him a chance. I did not. He got written off by everybody. What, number one. What what were you saying? The the, the odds were at the time that one. Brav William Hill. I I only see this on Instagram. I'm not a betting man, but William Hill had it a hundred to one. Something like that. 100 to 1, 100. Let me check it. I've screenshotted it because I wanted to put it up, but let's see. That's crazy. But, but it, 200 to 1. That's insane. 200 Just to win. To 1. Yard to win. That is crazy. But that that, is that's what you. That's, that's what I'm saying. That is the. That's how much of an underdog he was going into this fight. And then I kept saying to Mouse, you know, I feel like he needs a bit more credit because he's better than what he's shown, which is, which is a weird thing to do. You know, a lot of fighters won't see it, a lot of people won't see it. But I feel like he's got gears in him, which he doesn't, you know, he kind of coasts through a lot of fights. And I feel yeah. like if he puts his hands together and throws his shots, he can put pressure on people. And you never know, like if you hurt someone, you never know. He does it quite often, empty out the tank and then try and get them out of there. But when you come up against elite fighters mm. like Kovalev, mm. 
like Berta Biev. Unfortunately, and again, unfortunately in this case, the result was Arta Berta Biev got a stoppage TKO, uh, TKO sorry, in round eight. Um, valiant effort from Yard, but, you know, he got hurt. I think they were both throwing a, um, a shot. I think they were both throwing their right hands at the same time, from what I remember. But B have connected first, shook Yard's whole head back sideways, it was already sort of wobbling going down. Another hook to the back of the head kind of went down, got back up on nine or eight, <clears throat> kind of a slow count, but got himself up, gathered himself, and then Berta Biev just put it on him again. And bad stoppage? Do you know what? Yeah, that's, I was going to say there's a lot to unpack. Yeah. Mm. Let's talk about the, the actual decision and the stoppage and then I want to just go back to his performance yeah Yeah. 110% early stoppage his corner let him down this is his second attempt at a title yeah this happens way too often I don't care about oh your corner knows what's best for you unfortunately not this is your second attempt at a title the first time you lost it you almost won you almost won it. You kind of just didn't let go completely and just, you know, fall into the moment and 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 you know, seize it. Yeah, but that one must have burnt you. Yeah, and lessons must have been learned from that. Now you're going into the second attempt and you had to do a lot to get there. You had to do a lot to get there. Yeah, again, like you said, almost an unachievable task yeah and they stopped it so he got knocked down he took his time getting up he bought himself some time he went to uh, lean on the ropes in the corner he's give himself a minute to you know cut, recover and this is at nine you know ref's not getting to ten he's like at nine and he's leaning on the ropes he goes walk to me and he's just acting like yeah, I'm, I'm fine i'm fine he's, he's biding time he's just making sure that he's ready to go back in there and then as soon as they engage again, he probably lands one or two shots. Baterbiev lands, lands one or two shots. And then they throw in the towel. And he was like, I thought, what's the ref stopping it for? The towel wasn't even thrown in. I think they, they he hesitated. I legit think uh, whoever threw it in, were you sure it was Tunde? It was Tunde, yeah. Tunde threw in the towel. I It looked like I didn't see him throwing the towel, but I saw where the towel landed. The towel, when you throw it in, you throw it in, Yeah. This guy just dropped it, the towel like like that, innit? Like a tea bag in the bin, yeah? So he must have changed his mind. He's like, ah, oh, no, maybe not. But he slipped out of his hands, yeah? Too Sweaty late. palms. And now that's it. It was too soon. Too soon. And he was so fuming. And credit, credit to Anthony Yard for his composure, his sportsmanship. He was a gentleman. Honestly, yeah? Because I, like I said, I wasn't really singing his praises, but now I must. He took that, Poor, poor, career-defining decision, potentially, yeah? Like an absolute gent. And I really, really respect that because he would have been, I would have been fuming, Mm. you know? Most people would have been seething, like, what are you doing? But he just, all right, cool, he's fuming. You can see he's he's angry, but he's not saying anything. It's, I'm... As you're saying it, I'm playing it back and I'm just getting annoyed thinking about it. 100%. I have to say... If Anthony Yard, this is a message to Anthony Yard. If you want to succeed further in your career, you want to be a world champion, you have to leave Tunde Ajayi. I'm, I don't know Tunde personally, but from what I've seen, I've got no hatred towards him. I, I genuinely don't care what he does and you know who he trains and how he goes on about his career. But for the best. For the best of Anthony Yard's career, what, for, you know, to succeed and do what he needs to do, achieve this, uh, the the heights which he set out for himself, you, you need... No, not with Tunde Jai, you won't get it. That's just my opinion. I may be completely wrong. You might come out in the next fight, you know, and win a world title. I'm just saying, but it's not going to happen. I just think... If, if he gets to the title, if he gets the title and he gets all the success he, he's after, it won't be because of Tunde. Don't say he might get it. Do you understand what I mean? Like you said, oh, he might get it. So, you know, you never know. Nah, if he gets that, it won't be because of Tunde's input. Mm. Does that make sense? Because legit, that was sabotage. 
after sabotage. I, I, I can't even reel off off the top of my head. Um, you know, different instances. I know you're better at this than I am, but that there was just like, what are you doing? Yeah. What in the world are you doing? Legit, you honestly need to get rid of him. And I know you're. The word's not stubborn. You're loyal. No, they, they, as listen, they come, they love each other. Yeah, they love each other. They got an unbreakable. But no, no, it's true though. Yeah, I know you get frustrated, but imagine growing up with someone your whole. Life. I get it. It's, I get it's not. It's difficult. It's different in sport. You you need to make decisions which sometimes can cause a bit of friction, can hurt people, but you have to do it for the best of your career. It's longevity in the end of the day. You don't want to be getting hit in the head too many times. You don't want to be getting punched. You don't want to stay in the game too long. You want to achieve your goals, make money and get out as right soon as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Right off into the sunset. With Tunde, he is not going to achieve these things. In my humble opinion, I just can't see it happening. <clears throat> I watched the Kovalev fight live. I watched the input that he was giving and it was just so, so basic. You're fighting an elite killer at the, the time crusher. the you know, crusher you're fighting the crusher you're fighting someone who's been in there with Andre Ward who's been in there with some of the best fighters of all time and beaten some of them he's been, he was pound for he was top top I think he was two number two at one point but you get what I'm trying to say is you're mm -hmm. fighting somebody and you're getting giving terrible advice at times terrible advice at some point in some points you're not even giving any and I'm just thinking to myself like you know, I, I don't know what the corner advice was for this fight, but he came out brilliant. He fought a brilliant yeah, fight. It was yeah. a good, close, competitive fight. He learned from the Kovalev fight. I don't want to say it was close. I think I it was. I can't agree with you that it was close. I think th this is why it, I think he it was made close. a very good account of himself. Hundred percent. But this is why I think it was close. I think Bertabi have landed the harder shots. Mm -hmm. I think Yard looked the more active according to CompuBox it was very close anyway but Yard here, listen a lot of active. listen a lot of punches that Yard was getting hit with he was riding he was catching yeah he got hit with a lot of jabs a lot of jabs were connecting but again a lot of shots he was riding it was just it was a very good account of himself I think he did himself very proud he, you know what I mean you can't take any away from, uh, anything 100%, away from him 100% 100% but the stoppage was was diabolical bro it was terrible it was the worst diabolical. time it was it was the worst point to do it he had just gone down for the second time and he didn't look really hurt it was more so from he didn't what, even go down i don't think he, 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 he kind of did he, I, I don't know if he fully went he down was folded he was over, going, he's doubled up but i don't think he was no, no, no gloves were on the regardless the of what it was it was just yeah. a terrible stoppage yeah he might have been stunned he might have been a bit hurt bro you give him the benefit of the doubt Lions in the camp. You say lions in the camp all the time. You live by that. You die by that. And you didn't allow him. I'm not saying you wanted him to die. I'm mm. not saying that either. I don't no, want anything crazy to happen. Yeah. But to get... It's not like he was being whitewashed. It wasn't 8-0. He wasn't getting destroyed. Oh, oh. Time of the stoppage, he was up on two of the judges' scorecards. Imagine he had got through that eighth round, got to nine, survived 10, got to 11, won 11 and 12. He would have won the fight. I mean that's another that's another thing to unpack, because he was not ahead on he shouldn't been ahead on anyone's scorecard. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't. But, but that's that's that is what it is. <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> that is what it is, isn't it? He shouldn't be ahead on the scorecard, but it doesn't matter anymore. Now, Betabiev knows he had to just he had to do it emphatically. Unfortunately, that's probably not even satisfying for him. He even said, in fact, with the interview, in the interview, that. If I did it again, if I do this fight again, I have to do better. And I know I will do better and I can do better. Do you get me? So, again, that's not to discredit uh, Yard because what what heart? Mm. What heart? He got the hit with good punches shots. he took, those shots that he took, he is resilient. But again... Listen. Ah, stop I, this, I, man. I know you're not a big fan of the whole the slogans and the lines and the camp and I all. hate it, blood. I hate but it. But when I say he lives by that, yeah, he does. He so, genuinely, so, bro. He's getting hit with shots. He's throwing shots, mm. and he's hitting his hands on his chest. Yeah, hands in the camp, yeah. and it might not. It's not for everyone. It's not everyone's cup of tea. But it works. No, for if him. it does it for him, then that's absolutely fine. I do find it corny. I do find it cheesy. But if it works for you, it works for you. Now. That's what I'm not going to take away from him. But at the same time, whatever just like, whatever possessed you, Tunde, to do that, what an absolute mistake. What a, what a sorry evening it will be, or it was after that fight. You know? Like, how, 
that journey home must be awkward. I know, man. You, you, you hit the nail on the head because when you were looking at Yard, the first thing you said was, and you said it earlier, he must be fuming. No, he is fuming, whatever you said. He was, you could see and it. And you could see, like, he, he was biting his tongue. Bro, he when they to looked, ex- he was cowering even whilst they were, like, announcing, not the, not when they announced the winner, but, like, when they're standing in the ring. He was just cowering away. He couldn't, he was looking down at the floor. Everything was, he knew he messed up. He knew he messed up. But, like, that is, you are meant to take it to the 11th hour. You're meant to take it to the 11th hour with your fighter before he gets seriously injured, right? And he, there was no risk of him getting injured. If he got taken, if he taken down, if he got knocked down again, then you can start to okay assess the situation. That's two knockdowns right after the other. He's seriously hurt. He's not going to recover. Yeah, but this was what two minutes and a second. So he had another minute. Give him that one minute. It's not even a knockdown. If he would like, you can be knocked down and get up and be fine. Yeah, you can be off balance. You know, when you're getting bum rushed by someone. Someone's trying to finish you. Pause. You could, you could, yeah. Pause. Yeah. You could get, you know, thrown over, fallen over, whatever. It might look like a knockdown, but you're not hurt. If you were serious, I get it. Your your brethren's for life. Your friends for life. Your your basically family. So you don't want to see the other guy getting hurt. You don't want to see your guy getting hurt. Of course not. That's what you're there for as the yeah. trainer. Yeah. But you have to look at the context of it. It's the second world title fight. He's not going to get a world title fight anytime soon. Because, me? because now, but to be able to either defend against someone else or look to wait to fight the winner of Bivo. Um, and um, if they do the Canelo rematch, but you know that, and it's just, it's just, it's another year or two of waiting for another world title fight. You know, if you had won. All he's if, been doing is waiting as well. That's what I'm saying. And if you win this fight, I'm not saying that you would have survived the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, whatever. But hypothetically, if he had managed to get through that round and coasted and managed to survive and, you know, got on his bike and danced and moved and boxed and what whatever. What a disruption that would have been. But that's what I'm saying. You would have won three of the four belts. You could have gone on to fight Bivol next. You could have said, I want Canelo. Super fight. Super fight. Then go. Such a slip. Happens. Such a slip. Like, <clears throat> the more detail we go into, the more, like, stupid that decision seems the point i was going to make is and i got distracted by because i was thinking about all the outcomes that could have happened from him winning is you weren't seriously hurt you managed to recover he'd he'd been hit with harder shots in the in the fight before the, before the, yeah. the stoppage yeah. he got up he composed himself yeah he might have been wobbled a little bit but it wasn't on the point of no return in my opinion a lot of the shots when he was getting hit and he was getting stunned and he was in the corner, he was fighting yeah. back. Yeah. He was throwing shots back and Berta Biev is a beast. He's a killer. 19 and 0 now with 19 knockouts. You know, the guys at ringside on Twitter were saying they can hear his punches. They're vicious. Wow. Someone tweeted, I can feel his right hand. <laughs> it's, it's, it's scary. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? It wasn't at the point. huh? He's a southpaw as well. No, he's not. Where am I getting that from? He's not a South. He's orthodox. Yeah, he's yeah, orthodox. No, no, sorry, he's sorry. Orthodox. Yeah, you can't finish right. right. Wait, sorry. I won again. <laughs> that was the podcast, guys. That was episode fifty-eight. All right, I'm done. I'm gonna have to leave now. Leave. Get out. But yeah, no, bags. yeah. Oh man, that that fight there. It was a, it was sad, man. Because, <sighs> it, it, Mouse, you said it as well, bro. You said to me, I don't want it to go twelve rounds. But I feel like if it went twelve, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it, it, the way it ended, it's not satisfying for nah, anybody. That's what I'm saying. Not for no one. It's not no satisfying one. for anybody. Like, Even if it went twelve rounds, and you know, but to be of one on points in the end, you know, I get some dead, solace dead, from it, and dead, so dead, does dead, Yard. Dead, it's dead, not yeah. what we want to see. Yeah, but he deserved to at least hundred percent get to the end of that fight. The way those eight rounds like, went again in the moment, I said, he's not going to win anyway. But you have to. You have. It's not about to save your boxer. At that point there, you have to let him know that, yeah, we did it for your health and your safety. That wasn't for health and safety. That was just a panic. You yeah, yeah. I mean? Yes. And it's so anticlimactic. And it's so, for both people, because, uh, not Bivol, uh, Beterbiev, Beterbiev is thinking, blood, I'm just getting to work. I smell blood. Like, let me, you know, you can't give me the blood and then, and then withdraw it from me, mm. you know? Let me finish. And then Yard is saying, listen, I'm hurt, but I'm fine. Like, I'm holding on. I've got, I've got 59 seconds. I can, I can, I can ride this. Just give me to the end of the round, and then let's see what happens in round exactly. nine. Exactly. Now he was hurt. What man. a letdown! He was what? hurt. A, of course he was hurt, but he, he could have. He could have. Oh, hurt like, like emotionally. Yeah. Yeah, emotionally. I'm saying. Yeah, 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 he was. He was hurt. He was upset by that man. You could I tell. I was. He was I defeated. Was, I, I didn't see him winning the fight. I, like I never thought he would win. I never thought he had much of a chance at all. And I was like, that should have continued. I was so fuming. But yeah, man. I mean. We could we can dwell on this. 
for the whole flipping episode. But yeah, what a letdown. Tunde, you let yourself down, you let your boy down, you let your team down, and you let your country down, unfortunately. You really, really need to consider your position or your decisions. Because that was terrible. That was absolutely terrible. I think you, the, sorry, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, I think there comes a point when loyalty has to be thrown out the window at times. Because listen, at the end of the day, it's a selfish sport. Yeah. Your brain is being smashed in. It's your life on the line at the end of the day. Mm. And if you haven't got the right people in there making the correct decisions at crucial moments, it's about crucial moments. It's about the moments that count. It's the most important moments. Maybe better last ten seconds before you go out for that ninth round where you need that push, you need the right advice, slip that punch, throw that. And if you do not have that right person in there, it will cost you. Might not happen straight away, but eventually it will catch up to you. You need an elite mind behind an elite fighter. Bro, you need you need the right chemistry. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? They they might be tight, they might be good friends, they might be whatever. But they don't if you don't believe in your guy do you understand? Like, look at Leon, for example. It's a random example, but Leon Edwards, his fight, right? And his trainer. And that kind of, you know, um, yeah, connection that they have, mm. yeah? Leon, you need to turn it around. Why did I put on the brown accent? Leon, Leon, you need to turn it around. You need to, do you understand? Like, there's a completely different approach. You have to let your guy, you know what he's capable of. If you're, if you're, unless we, unless we find out later that uh, Yard had, you know, um, some you know he, he got knocked out in sparring for example and they were worried for his head something like that okay cool I'd understand that mm. well there was some sort of underlying issue that or they the, didn't want to expose the eye or something yeah like. they didn't want to expose or they exactly maybe he's uh, we didn't know but he couldn't see out of the eye for some, so, yeah. something like this then okay I'll understand and I'll be like okay that was a good move but if it's just you were worried for your guy that was sabotage man that was sabotage they must have better than uh, flipping Arta Batebiev man <laughs> I can't pronounce his name. Yeah, no, that yeah, was, it wasn't. That, it was, that, that, it was, oh, man. But another thing you said, so yes, a great account was made for himself, right? By Yard. But really, I don't think you can say that that was a very good performance, a very good fight, a very good fight. But you said activity. He was, he was more active. I disagree with that. I think every time Anthony Yard had a moment. No, I, I I, don't, I didn't say he was more active. I said he looked more active. Okay. So that's why I think he was winning on the card. Okay, all right. Okay, just, fair enough. He was moving a bit more. You know, he's, he's doing that. You know, but I'd be just very hands up, coming forward, walk you down, whereas yard down, hands. The round. A couple body shots round, in here, uppercuts. Yeah. You know, they might have been missing, yeah. but he looked more active. The round where... And that was, sorry, that was his downfall against Kovalev. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. You know? yeah, At yeah, least yeah. if you're not throwing... Look active because if you're trying to get to the cards which you yeah. were trying at yeah. certain points, yeah. you can steal it. You're in Russia, get away with it, hit and run, go. Just try. But yeah, sorry, go on. You were saying? I don't know what I said. Yeah, the time that uh, Better Be have got not uh, not knocked down, he got rocked. Round three, four, five. round five. Yeah, thank you. Round five. You see his legs go for a second, and he or he just looks. He's in danger. Mm. What did he do? Even that round there that would have been. Um, Yard's best <laughs> round He turned it around at the end Last 30 seconds is all I need Bam, bam Every angle Every angle Just even if they were not even that powerful It was the number of shots landing at will Because he couldn't stop them Right through the middle Between the gloves Every Bro, come on man And we kept saying Get away it was from a the landslide. ropes He lived on the ropes In one round He touched three corners uh, of the ring in one round, he was in three corners. He was trapped. As soon as he's on the ring and on the ropes, he's trapped. As soon as he commands the center of the ring, it's different. It appears like he's in more control. Um, Arta Batabiev was reluctant to engage, or was more reluctant to engage, or less uh, excited to, to get involved. You understand? Mm -hmm. To get engaged. And but when he's against the ring, I don't know what when he's against the ropes. Sorry, I don't know what he's trying to do. But Arta Batabiev was just raining down on him. And if you think you're doing rope a dope, if you're not getting caught or you're like Tyson Fury, nah, it didn't work. You were getting battered. You were getting battered. And then corners, in the corner, you're getting murked. You have nowhere to go. You were just lost. And then you went from one corner directly to another. And then another. You, went, you visited three corners. What are you doing? I think, I think, even though it might have been 
<clears throat> you know, in the moment it was wrong because he was getting hit with a lot of shots. I think it was part of his plan though because I really do, I do believe, listen. To get bad from pillar to post. <laughs> obviously not. But what I'm saying is, is I think it's like what Canelo tends to do. I'm not saying he's Canelo's level, but it's that, it's that thing where you, 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 you feel comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Defensively, listen, Canelo can of, even make it look like they everything's I missing. Get it, I get it, but I think for this fight in particular, these were all landing. I think he thought he's much faster and he'll be able to catch him on the counter. First round, when he's coming in, he started off. I was like, wow, there's a big difference in speed. This is first round. Second round, that started to wane straight away. That started to wear off. Mm. You get me? Like that that difference in speed did not benefit you because. He was just bullying you. He, no, but see, you there's see, no such thing as there's no need for speed when you're in the corner. Mm, exactly. And you're stuck there. There's I was no gonna need say, for speed yeah. because you just see them coming, you, you're gonna get banged. You see the foot speed is different, of course. But to be he's not the fastest guy, yeah. but he's very intelligent, so he cuts off the ring. He doesn't need the yes. speed. The thing about him is his deceptively quick hands. Yeah. So when he's in the corner, he's throwing a lot of shots at you. They're coming from different angles and they're coming Literally. quite fast. Yeah, so yeah. yard was stuck. But there were points. In those moments, even in those moments when he was getting hit, he was getting rocked, he's trying to throw back and he's trying to engage. And I think 100%. I think that's what it was. He was waiting. Some of them were hitting him. Some of them he was getting hurt with. But in general, I feel like he felt comfortable in certain situations. Not all of them, because there were certain points when he was in the corners, especially later on towards the end of the fight, yeah. where he was literally just huffing and puffing and try he couldn't even move i get what you were saying yeah. but i feel like it might have been a tactic to, to try and ploy uh some sort of you know defense mechanism and then Washington. just try and counter him nah, and then get him out of there just, you yeah, know but not... you know we, we i guess <laughs> we're talking too much about yard and we're not giving enough credit to artaba to be that's a, very true elite elite intelligent former olympian so you have to understand this guy's got the pedigree he knows what he's doing when he's in there got hurt Shrugged it off. Cool. That's a, he was composed. Composed. Was composed. And uh, but also never so panicked. Yard. So was Yard. Never he, he panicked. He was panicking, and at least he didn't show panic. But he did have. He had his moments. But both, yeah, man. Both it had was a good fight, man. It was a very good fight. Both had very good fo uh, poker faces on. Yes. Right the fight. Yeah. Yeah. Even though they might have been hurt, might have been rock, might have been getting tired. It was bite down on the cut. gum shield. They were both, you know, battered yeah, and bruised and cut. It was a good, very good fight, and uh, yeah. Artaba Tabiev now is is he's still undefeated. Keeps his streak going to nineteen fights, nineteen wins, nineteen KOs. Mm. Essentially, are we going to get the Bivol fight? That's what we want. Undisputed. Wow. Undisputed. All four belts on the he line. He said, "I'm just going to do my job." He was asked, "What are you going to do next?" He goes, "I'm going to do my job." And she goes, uh, "Bivol." And she said, "He goes that will make my job a good job. You know, that'll be a better job." So yeah. obviously, he wants that in it. Do you think um, he beats him? I think I think this is what I think about Bivol. I think he's got all the fundamentals down to a T. Okay, he's a bit quicker. He's a little bit. He moves around a bit lighter and better. Does that make? Am I making sense? Yep. No, I agree with that. Uh, and and this the fundamentals are there. Now, this is not to say that ne they only have fundamentals because they have more than that. Mm. But what I'm saying is, is for me. The one with more sound fund fundamental. They're both as strong as each other, essentially, as powerful as each other. Yeah, I don't think so. You think Bivol's less powerful or more powerful? I think Bivol. Yeah, I think uh, Berta Biev is is more, more powerful. Power. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Bivol. Bivol's not a knockout artist. Bivol's He's not, not a knockout artist. Bivol. Bivol is. I see this as being output versus power, and um. And I don't mean it in terms of Berta of his power like Wilder where he can't no, rely on boxing. No, he can no. still do that. Yeah. Berta Biev is more of a Golovkin to me. Mm -hmm. And I think Bivol is more oh, of a Canelo in this situation where he's going to try and outbox you. He's going to move and he's going to put break his punches together. Yeah, and try and break you down. Um, I don't but frustrate you. Getting, I don't see him getting broken down. Look, when, when um, Yard was throwing him punches, the biggest, and I'm, I mentioned this again whilst we were watching live, right? Let's say he gets a punch that lands here that automatically makes your head twist hard. He was like doing a 45 degree twist and then the neck muscles were engaging, rah, coming straight back. Like I know that zombie. sounds random, but it was just like, like zombies. Nah, I'm not even gonna fully, yeah. It was like, nah, these muscles are too strong for that to happen, mate. Yeah. I'm ready for this. He's very resilient. He's He can take a punch, but they both can. They both I can. think, um, I believe uh, Bivol, Beats Berta Biev when they when they do face each other. I think I've watched Bivol for a long time now, 
And I think the Canelo fight was completely... And I'm Canelo's number one fan in the whole wide world. Yeah, you are. In the whole universe. I'm the biggest Canelo fan. Uh, um, <laughs> but I just couldn't see how Canelo could win that fight. Yeah. It was just a... I rate him for taking that fight. But Bivol is elite and has the size on you. Yeah. With Bertabiev, both natural light heavyweights, both strong, both fundamentally sound, both elite in their own way, both elite fighters. Yeah. But I just think the movement, the speed... The combination punching, um, and eventually the the IQ in the later rounds, because Bivol goes twelve rounds more often. Yeah, um, I think if he gets better Biev in certain situations where he's uncomfortable, he will be able to use that to his benefit. So, I think right, this is when we're going to see them both at their very best. You make sense? Mm-hmm. You know when you go in with when an, a a, a you know, a top level fighter goes in with a lesser level fighter. It's a bit of a shit show sometimes. Yeah. It's a bit messy. Mm-hmm. You get dragged into their level and it's not great. This is, you're going to have the cream of the crop on both sides. And it is, it's not Canelo Bivol. It's very different because like you said, Canelo didn't have a way out. Unfortunately, he didn't have a way out. Okay. I don't know if, I think excuses were made and he, did this in training or he was injured, he had a stomach stomach ache or something in it. But this fight here is just two very strong, very durable, very tough men with different approaches to the fight. One wants to just carry on his knockout streak and take you out. Or the other, like you said, he'll break you down. And I, <clears throat> I don't think it will it will see Oh my gosh, do I think it will see the the the, the, the finish line? Do I think it will see I don't know, man. Yeah, because if you're I, saying Bivol wins, I you think, think, Bivol, I think Bivol, Bivol wins, wins by on points. breaking him down. I think he wins on points. I think Bivol outpoints him. I think he's too too fast. Uh, I think uh, I think uh, Berta Biev gets hit too much. I'm not taking anything away from Berta Biev. I think he's right, right. I think he's amazing. Do, do we see this fight this year? I don't think it will happen this year. I don't know what it is. I think I do. I, I don't know why, but I've got a feeling that Canelo might come back into the picture. I don't think he should for his own career. He'll I don't think he's the, sorry. He'll come down for that. I don't even mind seeing Bivol go down to one six eight yeah. and fight him for the belts. Why not? Ooh, give him a, give him a bit that. more of a chance. For which belts? For the one six eight belts? Yeah. For Canelo's wow. belts, yeah. Wow. Well obviously he's not gonna flip and come down and then fight. And for defend his heavy. defend yeah, his light heavyweight yeah, yeah, at one six eight. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Canelo's. A silly question. But yeah. Mad. Great oh, fight though. Yeah. Let's see yeah. what happens. Obviously, if it does get announced or they do discuss it, we, we might break it. We'll, we'll break it down for sure. But I Commiserations, just, Mr. Yard. Commiserations. Bro, you put up a great effort. You didn't do yourself uh, any you. any harm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tunde, did you harm? Sack him. 100%. You're getting sacked in the morning. <laughs> sacked in the morning. No, I'm joking, no, I'm joking. I'm not joking. He's not getting sacked, but that's the problem. They need to have a serious conversation. They need to 100. have a very serious conversation. Um, I mean, that's it for the boxing, really. Mm-hmm. That was fantastic stuff. I'm not gonna but, lie, it was a very good fight. Yeah, but it's not actually that it for the boxing because in attendance, <laughs> okay, all in right. attendance, we had the greatest fighter of all time the YouTube the sensation, goat, the greatest YouTuber, the goat, the goat. We had the greatest YouTube fighting superstar, <laughs> actor, rapper, dancer, is philanthropist. I don't, I'm just making it all okay, up. Okay, I'm thinking. We had Jake Paul in attendance. Yes. To go face to face, head to head with the one, the only Tommy TNT. Fury. TNT. Um, TNT. We had TNT in the building as well. We had the Furies in the building. Tyson was there. Um, but yeah, Tommy Fury and Jake Paul got together head to head, face to face for the first time to officially announce. Oh, it's it already been announced, didn't it? Yeah, but like, but officially like, to make it official. I was hoping you jumped in because I blanked. Sorry, sorry. I was like, "What's going on here?" I thought you were trying to make it dramatic. Like, no, it's no, 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 no longer dramatic. It's just dead now. No. Um, yeah, to make it official. Yeah. Uh, when is it? Three weeks away. February twenty sixth, live February in Wembley. 26th. Oh, that's a month away. That's yeah. a month. Away. In a month, February twenty sixth, live in London in Wembley. Wembley. That's no, mad. it's in Saudi. And, well, yeah, what are you on about? <laughs> I was thinking. I've lost because, the plot it's because no. of the interview that we was watching with yeah, Gareth yeah, Davis. In Saudi Arabia, Diria. Um, yeah, man. That's it's in Riyadh, isn't it? It's in Riyadh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, well, they call it Diria, but it's, I think it's just part of Riyadh, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the capital. 
Um, boy, that fight there. Unfortunately, Fury's gonna have to change his name to Fumbles. I just think we have to just go ahead and drop that, man. Excuse me. I'm very. What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the, what's on the line this time round, but he's got a child. He's he's you know he's gonna get a little pension pot, but uh, that's about yeah, it. What, what, I don't understand. What are you saying? Jake Paul's gonna batter him. What are you talking about, bro? Are you right? How, what what road to victory or what keys to success? Yeah, does Tommy Fury have that we know of? <laughs> he's gonna outbox him. You're telling me that Jake Paul's gonna beat Tommy Fury. You genuinely believe that? I, I want to make the same prediction that Jake Paul made. And he's not going to go past three rounds. <laughs> How many rounds is it? Probably, I, I, eight, probably eight or ten. Or yeah. I hope it's 12. I don't think it's even going to be ten. I, have, has he you, ever been in a ten round? You genuinely think yeah, that? Yeah, 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 nah, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I would love to say Tommy Fury can take that, but he's just, he's been a joke, man. And you know what? Ask me a year ago, okay. I would have said Jake Paul's got no chance. I don't like the guy. He's not going to win. He's a fake. The guy is a legit, bona fide boxer, and he's going to ruin Tommy Fury. He's, he's going to ruin him, Bav. That's a bold statement to make. <coughs> Unfortunately, it's just how it's going to go, mate. You've got to be realistic, Bav. I'm not a fan of Tommy Fury's antics out the ring sometimes. I, I don't mind him. And I think he's a little bit stiff. No, he's a bit weird. He does some weird stuff, you know. He's always walking around topless and in, in clubs and that, doing that weird, that video that was. Anyway, regardless of that, he's a bit of a madman. Whatever, TV personality does it. I don't really mind it. It's just I find him strange at times. But I find Jake Paul strange at times. They're both strange. Yeah, people. obviously. But Strangers. doesn't take away from the fact that Jake Paul was never fought a boxer, okay. never. All right. And I'm not saying that Tommy Fury's uh, resume is any better. He hasn't fought any. He's probably fought everybody with losing records or whatever. I don't even know who he's fought. Jake's fought better athletes, better fighters. But, yes, but there's boxers, a difference yeah. in boxing. 100%, 100%, and I don't think he's good enough at this moment to beat Tommy Fury in a boxing match. Unless he clocks him clean and sparks him out and Tommy doesn't have a chin or whatever. Which is going to happen. Which, but that, I mean, that's fine. Huh? <laughs> that's what's going to happen. But, you crazy. okay, I'm going to make a few more statements, right? Go on. And I want you to link them together. Please do. Okay. Jake Paul has not fought a boxer. Yeah? He hasn't boxed against a boxer ever. Okay? But he has trained as a boxer to box these fighters. Make sense? You with me so far? Mm -hmm. How many fights he had? Six? Six or four? No, yeah, six. And my man had eight, okay? Six fights. He's trained as a boxer every single time he's trained to box a fighter. And he hasn't fought a boxer. I'm confusing people, I know, but stay with me. The people that he's fought no, he's just boxed. He's he's trained. To, he's no, trained. I'm, I'm, I'm he's got. Point. However, it's what three years he's been doing it for? Almost three years. <laughs> he said it two two years and what three hundred sixty four days. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Very close to three years of of this. By the time this comes out, it will be three years, pretty much, and a day. Is it? Was well, it not going to come out in two? What are you on about, bro? I am bloody hell. Yeah, it might do. Yeah. But anyway, it'll be three years and a he's day. He's been training. He's been boxing for three years. Every fight he has, he trains to box. He's ready to box. So because he hasn't fought a boxer does not mean he hasn't boxed. Understood? Because he hasn't trained to, to he hasn't fought a boxer doesn't mean he hasn't boxed and doesn't mean he hasn't trained legitimately to box. You've seen his performances with Silver, with um, Tyron Woodley twice, Ben Askren, Cool. Everyone can say that was minor. Whatever in it. But let's let's look at the other three. Tyron Woodley twice striker in the UFC. That's he he he's he. I would have given him the best chance to beat Jake Paul, and he had two opportunities, and he didn't succeed in any of them. Anderson Silva. All right, cool. Five hundred and seventy or whatever. It doesn't matter how old he is. The fact that he. He, the how he looked against uh, Anderson Silva again tells you he's ready for this. It tells you he's a boxer. So now I'm jumping with Tommy Fury. He's never seen 
that level of spectacle on him, that level of 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 spotlight on him, that level of that caliber of fighter, Jake Paul would batter anyone he's fought so far. Anyone that Tommy Fury's fought, Jake Paul would batter them. Okay? So did Tommy Fury, I understand. Bro, they don't even respect him in the Fury family. They don't respect him. They went out partying, he was allowed to go. Um, he's had he's Tyson Fury called him a YouTube boxer. His own brother called him a YouTube boxer, and he's a this is his job. This is his career. This is what he does. And you're calling him a YouTube boxer. He's not ready, man. But that's the difference. He's a YouTube boxer. He's not MMA. He's not UFC. Bruv. He's not a wrestler. Bruv, we've got a month. A we've got a month. Listen. Just hold that dead thought of yours till one month. And then we'll, have, we'll come back to this. And you're going to eat your words, Rubai. I, I don't mind. I don't Rap mind eating day. it. I'm going to take him in. I'm going to eat him in. I'm going to just everything. Give me it. Give me it. I don't mind. I'll take it. I'll take my humble pie very happily if it happens. But I just cannot see... Jake Paul beating Tommy Fury. Call me deluded. Call me crazy. Call me stupid. I've had it before. I said, I'm going to win the league. What's going to happen? <laughs> but <laughs> how can you tell me based on him beating Anderson Silva? And you said he looked good. No, he didn't. Anderson Silva oh, didn't look good. Beat what's his name, Junior? Okay, he beat his, who looks as a child Thank as Junior. You. I could have beat him. Maybe, but there you go. But again, Jake Paul would have beat Julian Cesar Chavez yeah, Jr. But a hundred percent. Okay, it's a sick win. That's amazing. But you gotta understand, bro. Being fighting, training for boxers is different from fighting boxers. Do you get what I'm saying? 100%. At least Tommy Fury has fought guys. Maybe they're cans. Maybe they're tomatoes, potato, patata, tomato, tomato. Taxi mm -hmm. drivers, as um, Tommy uh, Jake, Jake Paul boxes, said. Yeah. But they are prof professionally trained. Boxes. I understand, but so is Jake Paul. Yeah, but now Jake Paul he's is. He's fought no one. He's fought MMA guys. I'm trying to, okay. Again, it's another comment. a big con difference. Another, you another know this better than anybody. Another statement that You know this be better than anybody. I got sucked into that. Tyron Woody, knockout artist, MMA. He got in there, he's fuck, he looks like a, I didn't even want to say yeah, it. he didn't look great. He You're not boxers. Great. You're not. <laughs> Is it comfortable? You gonna say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. You, he didn't look great. He didn't look great. <laughs> but and don't get it twisted. Jake Paul's re this is the crazy thing. Jake Paul's resume is better than Tommy Fury's, <laughs> and he's fought no boxers. I, I I like Jake Paul. I rate him. I like what he's doing. To come from absolutely no boxing background to be in the game for three years, create the hype he's already created, fight the guys he's fought. He's, oh yeah, they're not boxers. Yeah, I get that. I'm not taking anything away from him. Guys move slower. Like you're seeing it in Tommy Fury. He's fighting absolute bums, mm. but he's. But what I'm trying to say is he's fighting boxers, and I think it's a big difference. And this whole thing, Tommy's never been at this level, this stage, this, this, this. Bro, he's an influencer. He doesn't care. He's been on Love Island. I'm not saying Love Island and boxing is the same thing. Don't get me. Don't get me. I'm just saying he's in the spotlight all the time. He paparazzi's following him all the time. He's always no, in the it's spotlight. A different, it's a different feeling, bro. Bro, he's been in and around it his whole life. He's been there with Tyson. It's like that's true. You know, it's that's like true. Eubank. It's like Ben and that. They don't feel this type of pressure because they, from a youth, from young, from from child, from childhood, yeah, they feel the pressure. But it's a different. They're used to it. They they can handle it. And I don't think Tommy's gonna fumble it or anything. I don't Fumbles. think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna crack. I don't think he's gonna break. If he does, he does. And you know, right to Tyson, stay in Saudi, bro. Don't come back. 100%. Because if you do lose to Jake Paul. Especially the way you've been going on and talking, and I'm gonna smash your face, and I'm gonna, gonna end your career. It's a big, it's a big, it's right, a big, no, it's, it's a big man. Tears, boy. I mean, look, I'm gonna humbly respect your opinion. Mm. I am gonna say, Tommy Fury's got no chance, no chance. What are you talking but, about, bro? But it's fine. Because it's still a good fight. It's still a fight that I want to see. I said no chance. Yeah, unfortunately not, man. Unfortunately not. I'm, I, I'm, it's mad that I'm saying this because we this haven't is a different even, bro, tune to what I was We seeing. haven't even seen Jake get rocked. Exactly. And what happens if he doesn't? He got no chin, he goes down. Okay, Class, but gone. he could have got rocked by various other But fighters. they're not boxers. There's a difference. Okay. Anderson, you, you know you, okay. Anderson was the best. And do Anderson, you, no, no, no. You, Let me yeah. finish. Anderson was the best opponent he fought in terms of boxing. I don't mm -hmm. think Tyron Woodley was. Tyron Woodley's just known yeah, to be a yeah, knockout yeah, artist. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, can't yeah. pop. He can't box. Anderson can move, can yeah, hit, yeah. but he's 7,000 years old. Mm -hmm. Do you give credit to sparring partners? Do you give credit to people who. No. Okay. 
Do you know why? All right. Because we've seen it many, many times in the sport of boxing, sparring stories. I beat this guy in sparring. I did this to you in sparring. Yeah. I knocked him down. You get to the ring, crumble, fumble, finished. Khalas. We've seen it so many times. I've heard stories. I've heard stories. I sparked him out in training. Yeah. They fought in I'm the not, ring. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, oh, us I, two here saying, no, no, but I, 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 I battered cash listen, in training. No, 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 no. When I sparred him, I showed him, I scored him. What are you lying, man? Show the tape. You ain't got the tape because, well, you know, I never touched the camera. I'm not talking I, about that. I'm talking about actually now he goes and spars with elite fighters. No, I respect if if I respect it. And I understand you get experience from those moments. You're being in there constantly. You're training. I get that. Mm. But I don't translate that into the real fight. I get guys... That doesn't make sense to me. That's the whole point. The sparring is the closest thing to a, an actual fight that you will ever get. Yeah, but it's a different experience. That's why you I don't still respect gain experience. Uh, mat, uh, uh, mitt work. I don't, I, I don't respect pad work. Like, but that's for like, like a video. I don't respect that. I respect, I respect watching sparring. I like I, re- I, I think like I think they all have a part to play in the fight. Do. But I'm just saying there's a different experience from like they're different experiences. Yeah, you you understand how to move in certain situations. You're you're, you're planting your feet in certain places. You're practicing basically. Bro, but yeah. when you're in there with someone mm-hmm. who wants to take your head off compared to a sparring partner who's getting paid don't for get a job. Don't get twisted. Don't no, get twisted. Get, a lot guys, of these guys come with ego, bro. Of course they will. A lot and, of these guys come and it's Jake Paul, so he probably gets double the guys who want to take his head off for some clout or something. I get that. But again, being in there, being in there with someone who really doesn't like you, has got personal vendetta, spite there. But I just yeah, think no, it's 100%. different. Look, it's I'm not taking anything away from sparring. The yeah. guys he's sparred with and the guys he's, I've seen him train with are elite fighters. Some some very good fighters in their own right. But I'm just mm. saying it just, you know, I don't take too much. I don't take too much from that because I've, you know, I've seen some of the greatest boxers of all time tell us tales about sparring and what they've done and who they've been in there with. Fought people and crumble. We have a month to find out what happens. We have a month to dwell on it. We have a month to to, to look back at their fights. There's not many. There's what fourteen between them. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. It's absolutely fine. We'll we'll be able to understand a little bit better. Um, I stand by what I said. Uh, it's not going to change. I don't think. But I'm willing to look back at the tape again and see. What uh, is likely to happen? I don't know, man. It's it's gonna <sighs> be good. It's gonna be good. Regardless, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a crazy build up. I'm gonna enjoy it. Whoever wins, wins. I, I'm not really fast. It doesn't do anything for me, um, you know. But you know, if Jake, it, it's more meaningful if Jake wins. If Jake wins, you know, it's a big coup, and it's just you know. I He's shaking up boxing. He's mm. shaking up boxing. His dreams of taking a legit title is very very possible. And don't get me wrong, he can win. I just don't think he will. Don't get me wrong, he will win. I just think he can. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> like um, but yeah, man. Interesting. Like I said, pretty much 30 days, four weeks away. Should be interesting. It's going to be a cracker. Guys, it's going to be a cracker. I believe this is it. From your boys. I've been Fat Mouse. On the episode number 58 of the Sweet Science Podcast. Who else have we had here? We've had Cash with a K. I'm not a C. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. Do not forget to subscribe. Share it. Because this is the best podcast around. And we will see you lot next week. It's been fantastic. It was a good fight. It's a good evening. Good weekend. See you lot next week. Take care.